Hello, this is Jacob from 229V, and this is our world's robot explanation. So, to start off uh, with our drivetrain, our drivetrain here is 450 RPM on 2.75 inch wheels, very nice ratio. And uh, we run six wheels so that we can uh, preserve length for our hang mechanism coming off the back. So that was pretty good. Um, as you can see here, it's just a 36 tooth to a 48 tooth, a half cut 48. Uh, the half cut 48s are actually done by Heitner on 360X, so shout out to him. Uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, as you can see here, we don't use any kind of seal collars on our drivetrain. We use uh, pneumatic tubing as an alternative, which works very good. They're just friction fit on here, as you can see. And this is so that we can save as much weight as possible. So we try to avoid using any kind of steel collars when we don't need to. So that worked pretty good. Uh, as you can see here, uh, we have an idle gear here instead of here. So that's because uh, we can shift this motor back half an inch, leaving more room for our intake ramps, making the slope of these just a little bit better. Anyways, uh, moving on to odometry. We only run one odometry pod here. So it's just a simple little pivot, just like that. It's a uh, very constrained, very squared. So it had a had very good consistency. So we were pretty happy with that. And uh, as you see, our tank is mounted below the drive base, very low to the ground for that low cog. Very nice for driving. Uh, yeah, that's about it for the drivetrain. Moving on. So moving on to our intake. As you can see here, we don't really run a conventional first stage intake. Our intake doesn't have a wedge. We instead uh, outtake to wedge the second ring up top. So it kind of just wedges like this when it outtakes and then it intakes the bottom ring uh, after changing direction. So that worked pretty good. And uh, we didn't, and we did this because uh, we can't have a wedge on the front due to the limited expansion we can have in the back. So we try to preserve as much length in the front so we can have the hang expansion in the back, which I'll cover more later. Um, anyways, we also have a counter roller on our intake. So the purpose of this is so that we could raise our hook stage uh, a little bit so that we can package our brain and battery very low to the robot so that was very nice with the counter roller and another benefit with the counter roller actually is that it prevented uh all intake jamming so when the hook would like kind of like get to this weird offset spot here the ring would typically get jammed here but because they're be it's behind these flexible uh pressure beams it would just flex past uh anytime this would happen kind of like that um yep so that was pretty nice and the way we mainly tuned the pressure beams on here was with these with pieces of latex tubing uh so what these latex tubing what this latex tubing did was that uh when the ring was here we needed to make sure the ring didn't uh continue past this point so we have these pieces of latex kind of caging the ring in so that when another ring comes in it kind of just keeps it here waiting for the hook to like grasp onto this ring like that so that worked very good shout out to 937x to rec for recommending this to me with their uh counter roller intake uh and uh our intake is mounted on this uh delrin superstructure here that I design uh reason why we have this is because we obviously don't have lady, lady brown tower supports because we have these pistons here um, so we able, were able to get around this issue by just having a uh, double stack Delrin plates on the side of the intake and uh, mounted back to here just for to pivot our first stage to be very strong, very rigid. Is Delrin's very strong and rigid uh, on this axis, I guess. And uh, it was multi-purpose. It's multi-functional by uh, constraining our gearbox here as well. The shaft going all the way across. So that was another benefit with it. Worked pretty good. And it looks pretty sick, I would say. Um, another thing about our intake that's a little bit unconventional uh, is we run a uh, eight tooth Delrin sprocket here. And what this does, it gets the track speed equivalent to 400 RPM 12 tooth. So uh, we, we've been happy with that speed almost all season. It has uh, more than enough torque to index multiple rings into it and score on a mogul rather than the 600 RPM direct uh, 12 tooth. So this was pretty good, pretty happy with that. Uh, and uh, you know, the motor here, the you can see the nubs are kind of gone. Uh, we just cut them off and put a little cap nuts inside of here so that the motor can just screw directly onto here, leaving room for our Lady Brown Towers. 
and allowing us to not have any extra gearing if we were to mount it inside of here, which that's what Sammy did on JAR. He mounted his inside of here and he had extra gearing, but I wanted less friction. So I mounted it directly onto the shaft off to the side and it, it just goes directly down to our system of intake. So friction is pretty good. It's like 1.5 Watts, pretty solid. Uh, I'll move on to uh, the back lamp. So the back lamp is actually an over center lock system. Uh, it worked pretty good. Um, we actually, it actually came into, came into use uh, when we played against speed zappers in our division. They used their Saratoga Gold Steel Mech on us and it just wasn't able to budge. So it was pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. And it's able to grab at multiple goal angles and I'll just demonstrate the clamp real quick. Um, put the goal here. The goal can grab from any angle, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but it just clamps just like that, and it over centers just like this, and uh, it tilts the the goal the same amount into the intake no matter what. So you can see here, it's not it's at a very odd angle at the moment, but the ratio between these standoffs causes it to work correctly. And the uh, adjusting this length here. Uh, adjust when uh, it will over center so go if these are longer it will over center later going down further so it's just tuning spacing like that to get the over center lock to work with the, the hexagonal goal so yeah that was very easy to tune i would say uh and yeah this, this same distance uh i'll rotate it to be flat like this and it, it's tilted the same amount so works pretty good and then I will demonstrate the actual intake. Um, it's, it was pretty quick, pretty happy with it. And as you can see here, the ring gets separated by these passive hooks. Uh, and that's why these passive hooks just flex down like this. So the ring could just uh, flex past these and they snap back to keep the ring out of the intake. And they're also our passive hang hooks. So they're very multifunctional, very good. Um, but yeah, that's the intake. Uh, oh. Move this goal out of the way. So I'll move on to uh, the actual hang it, hang stuff. Uh, so these are our passive hooks. They're high shank shafts drilled into at 45 degree angles. The purpose of this was because since we're hanging from the corner, uh, the bar likes to conform to this angle better uh, at this angle. And it allows these passive hooks to reach onto the bar uh, a lot better, especially when we're climbing, we need these to have as much reach as possible so that our bot doesn't slip off and fall. So these, us and Sammy definitely did a lot of testing to find this is what worked. So, yep, uh, that, that worked pretty good. And of course they're multifunctional with the actual intake. Uh, and you can see here, I just had Delrin hard stops, uh, took a bit of prototypes to find the correct the kind of the correct spot for it, but this is what we came up with. Um, we're pretty good. We have a stamp going across into this screw joint here so that the it can't really twist or bend at all. So they're really strong because they're constrained between the intake half cuts. Uh, yeah, it worked pretty good. And then of course we have our rails here. They're just standoff rails going across like this. Uh, we had to shave down our collars a lot so that it could slide past this point when we hang, which was one of the limitations with the hang. Uh, so that took a little bit of tuning, a little bit odd thing to do, but yeah, it worked, I guess. Um, and then I'll actually move on to our PTO because I haven't covered that yet. So our PTO here, it's on a short stroke piston because it just needs very small movement to engage with the actual drive base. So again, min we want minimal air usage and it's, uh, it's double acting and we just extended the entire match until I actually go to hang. Um, so the drive gear is is that running at 600 rpm down here and then going to the 24 converts it to 900 rpm So we actually run a very fast winch for a hang And this is because uh, when we hang a lot of the time wasted is actually when it needs to unravel the The actual arm to go to the next stage rather than actually pulling up So we want to prioritize a bit of a speedier a more speedy ratio so that it uh, unravels the hang much faster to get that hang quicker. And I think uh, our hang ended up being about seven seconds, uh, high hanging and getting high ring. So I think that was pretty good. Uh, one of the fastest I've seen. 
Uh, so that, that worked very well. And we just run a straight shaft, no spacers, no collars, 900 RPM direct onto this. So, yep, and we ran half cut gears, uh, and we have a little spacers in between them so that they can, the plastic can like push it from the center so it meshes easier with this 36 here. Uh, but yep, that worked pretty solid. One of the better, best things about the robot was the PTO. Um, then I'll move on to the actual arm. The arm is very simple. It's a three wide half cut uh, going to a 36 tooth gear, uh, 12 to 36. So this runs at 66 RPM with these 5.5 watts. Uh, we actually at first had a 11 watt uh, on one side and the shaft going across. And we found that it was much slower and had a lot less torque than the two 5.5 watt split just kind of weird uh i thought it would have the offset effect because of less friction but no the 5.5s definitely worked a lot better and also improved the hang efficiency and just everything like that so that worked very good we run a rotation sensor because of course we need uh our hang relies on this because uh it tracks where the arm is in the winch by using this rotation sensor uh so it spins the winch until this rotation sensor reads a certain value going down and up so that we wanted something very consistent instead of using motor encoders like we did in our last robot. So yep, that's our Lady Brown. And then you can see here, uh, we have these high shrink shaft hooks. Again, at the 45 degree angle for the same reason as these. Uh, you can kind of see here, they, they're zip tied down, which the purpose of this was, well, uh, before our hooks were actually pivoting, like they, were, they could pivot and they were banded up is we thought that that would help the hang a lot, be a lot more efficient and conform to the bar easier. However, we found it had like little to no effect. So, and it made actually programming the hang position harder because the actual hooks would be in a different position from the arm. So you couldn't program relative off of the rotation sensor because of that. So we just zip tied them down and tie in the screws and that worked just fine. And uh, a lot of people asked like how our Lady Brown like didn't bend a lot when we hanged. And that was mainly because of uh, our string routing, uh, which we did in hindsight uh, when designing this bot. So uh, I'll actually go ahead and deploy the hang. Actually, no, I'll show the 360 Lady Brown function first. Um, see here, we have a flexible aligner. This was actually on our stage robot before. So uh, this worked pretty good, it was fine. Uh, so we just ran this again for the flexible 360 Lady Brown. I actually did a lot of positive goal seals using the 360 Lady Brown still. So very helpful for that. Uh, and I'll kind of show that here. Um, see here, it's full 360. And it's within the 24 inch limit, which is nice. Uh, yeah, that's all the Lady Brown function. Very nice. Uh, but how we, again, I'll go ahead and deploy the hang. Uh, again, it's gonna be very aggressive because it's full on air, but anyways, uh, this is the hang like deployed. So again, we designed the hang in hindsight to route the string from the outside to the center of the winch. And what this does, this keeps the hang constrained inwards when, when it's wanting to bend outwards when it's hanging. So the string is fighting against the forces pulling it out and all, as well as uh, it wanting to twist uh, this direction. Since it's on a collar here, this string would twist it in the opposite direction. So it, the string winching down the robot is fighting all the other forces of it wanting to bend almost, which that worked pretty effectively. We never like lost grip on our Lady Brown or had issues with that. So we were able to run a thick half cut and that, that was pretty good. And uh, a lot of people asked how we stored our string. Uh, it was actually very simple, very simple method that was very effective. Uh, so we just have a looped piece of latex in the end here and a string piece of latex tied to the string, the actual string. So what this did was it just kept it near the pivot point when the Lady Brown would rotate 360. There would be no change in tension in the string. So we have normal Lady Brown function while the string is just compact and out of the way. But we, when we actually went to hang, the winch actually uh, pulled the string out like this and it constantly maintained it almost a tension on the string so that the winch would rav ravel evenly. So it would just pull just like this until it finally gets out of the loop. And that's how it would wind the, these strings downwards. Uh, yeah, that worked pretty good, pretty effective method. Um, but yeah, that's just about everything. Uh, we use, 
we have a lot of plastic pieces in the robot, a lot of gusses going on, just to make, uh, just to be lightweight and have a, enough rigidity on the bot. Uh, we are well within the plastic limit though. That was just because no side skirts with big plastic pieces in the back. Uh, and I guess I'll go to our last thing, which would be uh, our doinker. So it was very simple. It was just a uh, single piston banded back doinker, which uh, the ge geometry wasn't ideal for it, but we didn't have much of a choice because we don't have Lady Brown supports going to the towers. So we had to mount it in an unconventional way. Uh, mounting it further back near our PTO and it, it worked pretty good uh, very simple and we only ran one because we didn't want to add too much weight and over complicate the robot and I don't think we really needed it um, needed to I should say uh, but anyways this is yeah this is our robot explanation just about covers everything uh, I want to give another shout out to Gremlin and Sammy to help develop this robot Gremlin actually built three out of the four CADs I did of previous hang designs uh, in pursuit of trying to get a fast and efficient tier three. Uh, and then uh, me and Sammy worked on a lot of the development of this uh, design. And then uh, Gremlin also did as well. So shout out to them. Uh, lots of help from them. Lots of nice teamwork there. Congrats to, to Excellence and uh, Teamwork Champion to them as well. Really great job. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll be competing on VexU Nightmare Robotics uh, for the next uh, year or so. Uh, so I guess I'll see some of you guys at Worlds. Um, but yeah, the, the Worlds Robot Explanation. Um, but yeah, that covers about everything. See you guys.